Hi everyone, this is Kenny Lee, and let's talk a little bit about right angle trigonometry, just as a review for what we're going on. So we've got basically six trig functions that we look at. I am going to use the Greek letter theta for our angle. So for sine, not sin, sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And with our picture, the opposite side, you're going to look across from the angle you're, the angle you're looking at. So we're going to look across, and so that's going to be A, and hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, so that's C. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and adjacent is going to be the side that's not the hypotenuse, that's next to your angle, so that's going to be B over C, and cosine is opposite over adjacent and that one's going to be A over B. Now those are the main trig functions you're going to use but there are three others that do come in handy occasionally and they are the let's say the upside down version. I usually say the inverse function or inverse but I have some math teachers that tell me that means something different now. Uh, but these definitely are the upside down versions of it. So upside down version of sine is secant. So that's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. In this case, it's going to be C over A. And this is going to be hypotenuse. So that's secant over adjacent. That's going to be C over B. And the last one is cotangent. That's going to be adjacent over opposite, in which case that's going to be B over A. So between these three trig functions we should be able to find the angle that's going on with this one and be able to find sides as well. So if we know two things about this triangle we should be able to find out everything else about it. So let's take a look at that. Here's a triangle that I've got set up that I measured the sides they turned out to be that, which is a little bit odd, but that's okay. We can do it. So for sine, I have got, again, it's opposite over hypotenuse, so that'll be 2.5 over 8.1. All right, and if we do that, 2.5 divided by 8.1, we get 0 0.30. 8, 6. Let's take one more. 4. Now that is the side of the angle. Now we want the angle. We're just going to practice with that. Let's see what we can figure out what theta is. So we want the arc sine of that. Usually arc sine, well, that's why they call it sometimes inverse sine. It's because they use that symbol of this right here. So that's really, I should say, sine negative 1 of 0 0.30864. Well, it's pretty easy on the calculator. You just, well, for my old calculator, we type it in actually backwards. We get the number in there first, so let me go ahead and put that in. 0 0.30864. And then for my old style calculator, you actually hit shift and then the function that you're using. So we're using sine. And that gives me that this angle theta is 17 point, let's call it, well, let's call it uh, 9, 8. We'll try to do that. We'll see if we get that for some of the others. For cosine, we've got adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 7.7 7 over 8.1. Again, if we do that, 7.7 7 divided by 8.1, we get 0 0.9506, let's call it 1. Now, if I want the angle, we want the arc cosine, or inverse cosine, of that number, 0 0.95061. And so if we do that, I want to type that in, 0 0.95, 0, 0, 061, shift cosine, we get around 
degrees, 18, technically 18.08 degrees. Now there is a little difference there, but mostly because I've rounded off, right? If I kept the full number in, they should be the exact same number. So let's look for tangent now. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's 2.5 over 7.7. .7. So 2.5 divided by 7.7 .7 gives me 0 0.3246, let's call it 8. I've rounded up a little bit. So if we do the arc tangent of that, 0 0.32468. Three, two, four, six, eight. Shift tangent. We get seventeen point nine. Well, nine in this case. If I round up, stay consistent. So they all hit about the same thing. Now, in your newer style calculators, you would actually type in where well, you would hit shift or second, then your trig function, then type in your decimal, and then hit enter. That will do it. My calculator is a little bit old, so it does it a little bit backwards. Now that's theta. Phi is up here on this top corner. So for phi, it, the perspective changes a little bit. Now your perspective is up on this top corner. So for sine, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side would be 7.7. .7, and the hypotenuse is again 8.1. For cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 2.5 over 8.1. And for tangent, it's opposite over adjacent. So that's 7.7 .7 over 2.5. Tangent is the only one that can have a number outside of between negative 1 and 1. If you got sine and cosine, that when you do that fraction, it's always going to be from negative 1 to 1. If you get anything outside that range, you did something horribly wrong. But for tangent, it can be just about anything. So again, if we want the angle for this one, let's, let's take that top one. And this time, I won't round as much. So we've got 7.7 .7 divided by 8.1. We've got that. I'm not going to round off. I want to keep it that. And then I want the arc sign of that. So I'm going to hit Shift and Sign. We get that phi is... 71.9, we'll say 2 degrees. If I do that for the others, this time I'm not going to round. I'm going to leave it in the calculator. Shift cosine, because I want the arc cosine. I get phi is 72.02 degrees. And for tangent, 7.7 .7 divided by 2.5. Shift. See, that one's going to be 3. This one's, oops, wrong. Equals 72.01 degrees. So they're all very close together, all right around 72, which it should be because 90 minus, this is all around 18, should be 72 degrees. How are we going to use this practically? Let's say I've got my triangle here. And I've got this generic triangle. Nothing's drawn to scale. And I want to find these two things, C and theta. But I want to know A and B. Well, first, let me decide what I want to do. One thing that we left out is that this is still something we can use in trig, the Pythagorean theorem. So since I know two sides and I want to find the third, that would be the one that makes most sense. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that would be 10 squared plus 25 squared equals C squared. 10 squared plus 25 squared equals that. Now I'll take the square root. We get C to be 26 point let's say 9.3 units, whatever that is. Now for theta, since I know all three sides, I can technically use any trig function I want, but the best choice is tangent. The reason why is because we're given A and B. We're given the opposite and adjacent side. 
So that works best with tangent. So the opposite side was 10. Adjacent side is 25. That's 2.5. We want to find the arc tangent of that. So 2.5 arc tangent. That gives me theta to be 68 point, let's say, 2 degrees. You can always convert these to radians if you feel the, the need to, but for right now, we're going to stick to degrees. So let's say we've got these. We've got theta and we've got the hypotenuse. We want to find side A and B. Well, since I know the hypotenuse and the angle, I'm thinking using sine and cosine. Well, sine would be the opposite side, which is A, over the hypotenuse, which is C. So in this case, it'd be sine of 35 degrees equals A, we don't know, but C is 20. So if we take 35 and find the sine, we get that 0 0.5735. Seven, well, let's call that 8 equals A over 20. I'm going to leave it in the calculator because I just, that way we don't have to deal with all the stuff like that. And at this point, we're rounding in an arbitrary place. So I just multiply by 20. And I get that side A is 11.47 units. For B, I will use cosine the same way. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be B over C. So cosine of 35 degrees equals B over 20. So 35 cosine times 20 gives me that B is 16.38 units. By the way, if you're doing polar coordinates, those would be your polar coordinates for that one. Let's try one where we change the perspective a little bit. I gave you phi on this one. So we're going to still use the same trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, maybe Pythagorean theorem. But now we've got to change your perspective. We know this and side A. Well, I want to find side B. Well, that's going to be opposite and adjacent. So I'm thinking tangent of, whoops, phi, opposite sides B, adjacent sides A. So tangent of 50 degrees is equal to side B, and A is 7. If I've got 50 tangent, gives me that, times 7, gives me B to be 8.34 units. For C, I've got adjacent, and that's hypotenuse. The Pythagorean identities. If you've been inflicted with trigonometry, or now most people call it pre-cal, you've had to memorize a bunch of stuff. Unit circle and all kinds of things like that. But there's some things that you really don't have to memorize. You can figure out. And the Pythagorean identities is one of them. Everybody knows this one. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. How you can use it. I've got a triangle set up. And I've got the different trig functions set up with what they are. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. And so let's say we take this first one here and divide everything by c squared. So we get a squared over c squared plus b squared over c squared equals c squared over c squared. Well, that's 1. a squared over c squared, well, a over c, and we square top and bottom, so that becomes sine squared theta b over c, uh, that's cosine, so that becomes cosine squared theta. So there's one of your identities, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. 
if we take the other one, let's say instead of C, let's divide it by, let's say A squared. So we get A squared over A squared plus B squared over A squared equals C squared over A squared. That's 1. B over A. Let's see. B over A. B over A. Oh, that's cotangent. So that's cotangent squared theta equals C over A. That's sequent. Cos oh, sorry, cosecant. CSC squared theta. There's the other one. And if we divide the last one by B squared, we get A squared over B squared plus B squared over B squared equals C squared over B squared. Well, A over B, let's see, oh, that's tangent. So that becomes tangent squared theta plus B over B, that's 1 equals C over B. That's secant squared theta. And there's your third Pythagorean identity. So if you know this, and you know your trig functions, you can find those. All right. Thank you for watching the video. Tune in again, and we'll talk about how we can use trig in physics with vectors. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye.